Dodging and burning is a popular editing technique amongst landscape photographers. This is usually done in Photoshop and most certainly with the help of third-party plugins like the TK panel or the Astro panel. But you can actually also do this in Lightroom. So with this video, let me show you how. If you want to follow along, you can find the raw file in the description of the video and now let's jump into it. So this will be our base raw image. This is a panoramic shot and that's also why there is a little gap at the bottom, but don't worry about that. Now, before we start with the dodging and burning or anything else, there's always one thing we need to do first and that's the base raw adjustments, which just means we need to get the exposure right. So I want to start this by going to the profile and change it to Adobe Standard, just to lessen the contrast overall and in turn we get more control of it ourselves. I'm not going to change the white balance, but I want to bring up the exposure just to get some more details out of the darkest spots. Then I'm going to bring down the highlights since I want to reveal details in the sky. And I'm going to bring up the whites, which will add back some contrast. And at the same time, I'm going to drop the shadows for more contrast. While I also increase the blacks to fix those very underexposed parts. That's looking good. We could use the contrast slider as well, so bring it up a notch. And then for a clear looking image, I'm going to add texture, clarity, and some dehaze. And let's bring up the vibrance to introduce some saturation. So that is our base image. We have balanced the exposure quite well. You can see that comparing it to before. Everything seems to have a little more punch and the colors are stronger. But now let's talk about dodging and burning. Usually when dodging or burning, you want to target specific areas. So let's say you want to make the highlights in those plants in the foreground brighter just to get some more attention on them. Or you could say you want to make the shadows back there deeper to add some contrast between the landscape right here and the mountains in the back. You could also make the sunlight brighter, which is hitting that little hill right there. So there are many, many things to do with dodging and burning. The hard thing is to target those areas. To target those, we want to rely on masks. So let's go ahead and open up the masking panel. And let's start with something very, very simple I use on most of my images. Let's make the blue part of the sky darker without affecting the mountain or without affecting those clouds. Since we have a blue area right there, that's really easy. We just need to make use of a range mask. So click on it and here we can choose between color, luminance and depth range. Since we want to target the color, of course, we're going with the color range mask. Then just click in here and you can see how this nicely targets all the blue color tones. We can even make use of the refine slider to more precisely mask out the clouds if we want, just like that. Now the problem is we do have selected parts of the lake and the mountain in the distance. This problem is very easily fixed. Just click on subtract and here we are choosing a linear gradient and with the linear gradient active just drag a linear gradient up like this. And we want to make it like this since we are darkening the red part and from the right there is sunlight coming in so it wouldn't make sense to darken this area. That's why we want to get rid of this mask selection right there. So with the first mask set up, let's bring down the exposure. And you can see how we are nicely changing the blue of the sky without affecting the clouds or the mountains. So I want to make this effect stronger by using another color range mask. Again, I'm just clicking right there in the blue part of the sky. And again, I'm making use of subtract linear gradient. This time I want, to, I want this mask to be smaller, so I'm going to create a bigger linear gradient subtracting from the color range mask. And again, I'm just dropping the exposure. And the reason for me to apply two of the same masks on the sky is to have a nice gradient going from a rather bright blue sky right here to a very dark blue sky up there in the top. I can deactivate the mask so you can see the difference from before to after with just two masks. And this is what we call burning. Now let's do a little bit of dodging or in other terms, let's make a few areas brighter. I want to start with those plants in the foreground. 
Now here it might get a bit trickier. We want to target those highlights without affecting the shadows of the plants. So let's create a new mask. This time I think it could work with a color range mask, but I want to make a use of a luminance range mask, which basically is like a luminosity mask in Photoshop. So let's click on this one. Again, you can hover over the image and click in the area you want to target. So I want to target the highlights of the plants right there. So I click in here. And the foreground does look quite good actually, but of course we have selected way too much in the rest of the landscape. So in this case, hover over the mask, click on the three dots. Here we want to choose intersect mask width and here choose radial gradient. I'm just creating a radial gradient over the plants in the foreground. And since we're intersecting, only the part of the masks that of course are intersecting will be selected. So here we get a very precise mask to target highlights. We can tweak it a little more by adjusting the luminance range mask. Maybe we don't want to have the brightest highlight, so I'm going to bring that point a little further down. And maybe we also want to cut off the darker midtones by bringing this point up. And we can make it softer or harsher by adjusting this point. So I think this is looking good. What I want to do next is I want to dodge things or make things brighter. I'm simply going to raise the exposure. And we are doing this because we want to have more attention on those plants in the foreground. And making them brighter will give us that result. So that's looking nice. We can also bring up the highlights just like that. And maybe let's play around with the colors as well. So I'm going to bring up the temperature, making those plants a little warmer. And I'm also going to raise the saturation. That looks great. Again, let me deactivate the mask so you can see the difference from before to after. That's a huge improvement. So let's see, I think we can improve the contrast down there some more. Let's use another luminance range mask. And I want to target the darker midtones. So I'm clicking somewhere right there. So we're getting a pretty wide selection again. I don't want to target the darkest shadows. So let's bring up this point. And I also don't want to target the brighter midtones. So I'm going to bring down that point. All right, and maybe let's also reduce the range a little bit here. Okay, looking good. Again, we have targeted a few areas which we don't want to affect. So I'm just going to say subtract, use a linear gradient and get rid of all of them except for the very bottom part of this image. And what I want to do here is to simply bring down the exposure. And again, by doing this, we are burning this area. Just slightly bringing it down, improving the contrast between the dark foreground and those brighter plants. Perfect. Now I do think the foreground looks quite good. Let's work our way through the image on the middle ground. Again, I am going to create a luminance range mask and I want to target the shadows of that little hill back there. So I'm going to click right in here. This is already looking like a pretty good selection, but I still want to tweak it some more. Again, I'm bringing up the black point since I want to burn things without underexposing. So that's very, very important. We don't want to target the darkest parts and make them even darker. We just want to target the darker midtones. And I'm also going to cut off the brighter midtones as well. Just like that. Let's maybe increase the range here a bit. All right. Again, we have selected areas which we don't want to change. So I'm going to make use of that intersect mask one more time. Click on the three dots, go to intersect mask width and choose radial gradient. Then just drag one up like this and nicely target those shadows right there in the center. And I want to make it darker. We could use some, we could make use of the exposure slider for that, or we could also just bring down the shadows. And this, as you can see, adds a very, very strong contrast to this area. This looks really, really good. Now, let me dodge the highlights right there on that hill. For that reason, let me use a color range mask. Again, I'm just clicking right in here. 
This selection is way too general. So what we want to do is to make use of that refine slider and just bringing it down. And again, we want to make use of that subtract button, choose linear gradient and just get rid of that foreground selection. And I guess we could also get rid of that mountain selection right there at the top. Okay, with that mask, what I want to do is to bring up the exposure, making those highlights a little brighter. And I also want to add some temperature, giving them a warmer look, maybe even bring up the saturation. Perfect. Then there's one more area I want to adjust and, and that's the shadows on the mountains. And for that, I'm going to use a luminance range mask, just clicking in the shadows right there. This is a bit harder to adjust, I think. I want to bring down the highlights quite a bit. Let's see. I think I need to bring up the midtones right there. On few areas, this might get a bit trickier, but it's totally possible using this luminance range mask to dodge and burn. So again, we want to tweak the selection. Um, let's go ahead and go use the intersect tool again, but this time I'm choosing the brush. And now I'm just brushing over the mountain, just where I want to burn things. There we did select some of that foreground. I'm going to erase that using a radial gradient. And here, let's just bring down the exposure, making those shadows a little deeper. Perfect. And at this point, I'm quite happy with how this image is looking. So let me deactivate masks to see the difference. This is with just the base raw adjustments. And this is with dodging and burning applied. So I hope you can see why this is a popular editing technique. And it's especially helpful for landscape photography to bring attention to the important areas of the image. So that's Basically it for this tutorial, still I want to finish the editing for this shot, so feel free to keep on watching. What I want to do next after the masking is some color grading, so I'm just going into the HSL panel. I do want to raise the yellow saturation and the green saturation slightly, maybe even the blue saturation. Then let's head over to the luminance tab. Here we can further tweak the contrast I can make those green tones a little brighter by bringing up the yellow luminance, just giving it some more punch. And I can make the sky darker by dropping the blue luminance. So I guess I don't want to do too much to this image. Let's see. I want to sharpen it, so let's open up the details tab. And I'm going to drop the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking, and of course, increase the amount of sharpening. That is the image after the Lightroom adjustments. We can compare to the original RAW file once more. You can see it's looking so much better. Now there's just this gap down there I want to fill. I don't think I need to show this in this tutorial. So I hope this video was interesting and helpful. As always, if you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.